Hey, good morning. So, got a farm update, hopefully pretty quick farm update for you here this morning. So, it is August 24th. Uh, I am out here before work again this morning. Days are getting shorter now. So, unfortunately, the heat's still up, humidity's still up. So, you're having to come out and either pick first thing in the morning or right in the evening. So, I'm choosing to do it first thing in the morning when it's a little bit cooler. A little bit, it is a little bit more humid out here, but uh, days are getting shorter. We're losing like two minutes of daylight sunlight or uh, two minutes of daylight a day right now. So uh, it's getting to be that time. Anyway, garden back here behind me. You can see we've got all kinds of tomatoes back here behind me. So I'm picking about a bushel of tomatoes a day right now. In this garden here behind me, this was the garden that we had our cucumbers and squash and zucchini. Squash and zucchini are dead. They're done. Eggplant's dead. It's done. Half the okra actually died. We can't figure out why the okra died, but it died. So, But the tomatoes are still booming, unfortunately, because we have canned everything we're going to can this year. We've probably made 200 jars of canned goods this year. Uh, most of those quarts, whether it be tomatoes or spaghetti sauce or vegetable soup or tomato soup or whatever, plus all of our pickles and you name it, and beans. Oh, Lord, beans. I'm still picking beans. The wife has told me I cannot bring any more beans in this house. Not I mean, not this house. I'm not in the house right now, but I can't take any more beans into the house. So we are selling as much as we can. We've got some uh, uh, elderly neighbors and church members, and so we're giving them some tomatoes and beans and whatnot. So, you know, that's where we're at right now. Come over here and take a look at this pumpkin that I showed you earlier in the earlier video. Let's run over here real quick. We've got a big old pumpkin over here. We still have okra coming on. You can see a little bit of okra right there. Half of it died. Half of it's still there. But take a look here at these pumpkins. Check out the pumpkins. Oh man. So this was that this was this wild pumpkin vine that came up all on its own. It's covered. These pumpkins, they've still got a little bit more time to go. Um, we don't normally harvest them until the vines have totally turned brown. So uh what is today? I said August 24th. We're probably another three or four weeks away, I guess. Probably weather dependent on how much rain we get and how quickly the vines dry up and die. Anyway, I'm gonna pick these tomatoes and I'm gonna get down to the other garden so I can get it picked and get back to the house and get to the work. Today is hay day, not for me, the neighbor. The neighbor's mowing hay today, so he mows all of our hay around here. Um, it smells amazing out here. A lot of people have allergies to it. Sometimes I do. No, it's seasonal, I think. It depends on if it's about a, a lot of ragweed or whatever they're mowing, which, which is what's at my house, but I love the smell fresh cut hay oh I love it until I start to sneeze but I love it so it's just one of those smells I grew up with as a kid and I still love to smell it to this day but anyway I'm gonna get picked get out of here get out of his way because I think he's heading over here to come mow I'm gonna get down to the other garden and get picked and then head up the road to the house so see you down there all right we made it down to the other garden down here picked up at the other house there really weren't that many tomatoes up there we had a lot of rain last week and uh, all those tomatoes just started sucking up all that moisture and they started splitting wide open. So I bet I've thrown away two bushel of tomatoes in the past week where they just split right down the middle. I mean, they were just sitting there hanging apart. It wasn't like they had a small little crack that could have sealed back over and we could have eaten it. I mean, these things were split wide open. They had maggots crawling inside of them. And I'm picking every day. I'm picking... And when the rains were coming, I was picking three times a day just to try to keep that from happening. Sometimes you can't help it. So I'm down here at the other garden now, and you can see I've got big old tomatoes back there behind me. A whole row of tomatoes down through here I'm going to have to pick on. All of our peppers are here, so we got um, jalapeno peppers right through here. Then we switch over to spicy banana peppers, and then I've got poblano peppers. My first year growing poblano peppers, and they are doing fantastic. We love eating. i got a gnat flying around the lens. Got to kill it before it gets on the lens. Um, we love authentic Mexican food, and so I'm planning on doing a lot of interesting things with these poblano peppers. Uh, we got some of these sweet stuffing peppers right here. They're just little bitty tiny sweet like bell pepper kind of, but they're, they're not really bell, but they're good. And then after that, I got a couple more bell peppers, bell peppers over here, and then I got some bell peppers over there. But the tomatoes have done incredibly well down here in this garden this year. The Cherokee purples have been just off the charts this year. I mean, I have picked some absolute monster and delicious Cherokee purples. The people that have bought tomatoes from us, the people that we've given tomatoes to, have all just raved about these Cherokee purples. So, I'm going to get these picked. I'll come over here and look at this, this squash. So, oh, they're turning colors finally. All right, 
cool I hadn't checked them in a few days so down here is um, I've got a couple of bush style spaghetti squash first time growing spaghetti squash so it's right there you can see they're starting to turn colors a little bit I got another younger spaghetti squash down here it came up really late it doesn't have anything on it yet it's got a couple blooms too late in the season probably not going to produce anything and then my butternut squash down through there it's absolutely loaded so looking forward to that I'm giving that a little bit more time same things with the pumpkins I'm gonna let those vines dry up and turn brown before I go pick those and then uh, I'm gonna pick here or I'm gonna run over I'm gonna show you the one pumpkin garden it's a little wet up on the hill so I'm not gonna drive up to the big pumpkin garden I'm just gonna assume it's kind of comparable to this one here so I'm gonna go check this one out or I'll show you that one in just a little bit and then I just heard the road crew just arrived up here on the road remember some of the videos previously I talked about road crew came out and they were um, cleaning out the fence row at my house well they're out here working again they took like a month off and they're back again I think I'm gonna stop on the way out and see if they want some of these tomatoes I picked today because like I said wife told me not to bring any more into the house so I'm gonna see if I can stop and see if they want any tomatoes see in a few hey while I'm at it here before I leave this garden I want to point out one other thing if you look around here behind me this whole garden is lined with black walnut trees I hear people all the time say you can't grow tomatoes under walnut trees okay technically they're not directly under the tree but a large portion of this garden is underneath a portion of a canopy of a black walnut tree yeah they do produce a lot of acid and they do kill a lot of things at the base of them but you can grow a garden around near and even partially under black walnut trees so that's something i hear all the time a lot of people like to say oh you know you can't grow tomatoes i've heard people say you can't grow tomatoes within 50 yards of a black walnut tree i, I don't know where that i don't know where that's come from with people because that is just not the case at all this garden here has it has provided bushels and bushels and bushels of tomatoes this year and i bet you there's 20 black walnut trees surrounding it right here so i don't know where that thought process has come from from some people but it is entirely wrong just just wanted to point that out because i hear that all the time on social media and different on social media places uh, groups and forums and that is just not the case okay i'm over here at the pumpkin garden i'm gonna try to hurry up and get out of here Tractors just rolled out up there. Just missed getting them on video, but tractors are rolling out to go mow hay. They're not going to mow here first. I guess it's too damp down here. They're going to go somewhere else, but look back here behind me. There's just pumpkins, pumpkins, pumpkins all the way up through there. There's just crazy amounts of pumpkins in here. Most years, we have a problem with a groundhog, and there's usually a groundhog living underneath that barn or a groundhog family, and they'll come out here, and they will eat a hole into one side of that pumpkin and it just obviously the whole pumpkin just rots this year we haven't seen a groundhog thankfully knock on wood as soon as i can get over there to knock on wood and so it looks like we're not going to have a loss this year because of groundhog now all the rain that we've had over the past week um you can start to see problems you can start to see the pumpkins do the same kind of thing the tomatoes do where they suck up all that moisture the pumpkins can't grow fast enough and then they just split wide open we did have that happen one other year so far i don't see any signs of that happening yet so i'm hoping they don't but you can also get a lot of uh, of uh, uh, mildew and mold type happening growing on these pumpkins which is which is just as bad for the most part so hopefully we can avoid that and these pumpkins will survive and we'll be able to harvest them here before long and take them to market so we always look forward to the pumpkin harvest we love cooking pumpkin we use pumpkin to cook with to eat all year long these pumpkins sell really well because they are such a unique pumpkin. They're not like the jack-o'-lantern pumpkins that you see 99% of the places you go to buy pumpkins. These just are so unique, so large, so different shaped that they just they sell really good. People always comment on them. So I'm really hoping for a good harvest of pumpkins this year. So I'm going to get out of here, get up the road, see if the road crew, the, the, the tree trimming crew is still up here. If they are, try to give them some of these tomatoes so that way they... I tell them they're saving my marriage if they take some tomatoes. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. I uh, appreciate you watching. You know, if you would, please just go hit that like button. If this is the kind of thing you like, hit that subscribe button. I understand if you're not into hunting. That's that's your thing. A lot of people aren't into gardening. That's, that's just the way they are. 
I do it all. To me, it's about getting the food for my family from the land, whether that be gardening, hunting, foraging, fishing, whatever it is. I want to provide food for my family coming from our land or from land, even if it's public land. Um, that's just the way that, that's what this channel's about. That's what I want to do. I want to inspire, I want to educate, I want to share. Whether that be through the gardening, through the foraging, through the hunting, through the fishing. So, you know, I understand if one of those is not your thing, but I just ask that you have an open mind. You know, be open to people of that lifestyle that do it and that do it ethically. And just, you know, hear us out. Maybe you'll learn something. You may decide you want to try something new out. If you do, hit me up. Shoot me a message. I'll see what I can do to help you out. But anyway, hope you have yourself a wonderful day. Stay safe. God bless.